Hello everyone, and welcome back for part 2 of the 148 scale A10 by Hobby Boss. In the last video, we built a cockpit, completed major assemblies, small assemblies, and then finally got the aircraft ready for painting, and that's where we are now. So first, we're going to add a shadow coat using some XF1 Flat Black by Tamiya. This is going to be a shadow coat that is basically going to bring out uh, all the recessed areas of the aircraft. And then we're going to start using some XF2 Flat White to do some marbling. I'm just going to be doing some random patterns uh, just to mix up the uh, shading on the panel lines for when we actually start painting the camouflage. All right, and here we are with the completed marble. As you can see, it's just gonna add a huge amount of shading to different panel lines, uh, in addition to just varying colors and helping break up just uh, solid colors and the lines that are gonna be made during the camouflage process. Now we're gonna go back with some more Tamiya XF1 flat black, and we're gonna do some panel lines. This process actually took an extremely long amount of time on this A10 compared to other builds I've done, such as the C130, mostly because Hobby Boss has put uh, a very high amount of effort and detail into this kit. So especially on that back area by the engine, there were a lot of panel lines. And so this took about an hour to complete. All right, and here we have the completed aircraft with all the panel lines. As you can see, it was a very time consuming process, but this is definitely gonna help out the aircraft with uh, how it looks and the weathering look that it will have. So we're gonna be doing this aircraft in a three tone green camouflage that was used during the Gulf War as that is the uh, aircraft that we're trying to simulate. We're gonna be doing this by using some Tamiya XF 27, 26, and 67 for the green colors. And we're gonna start off with the 67, the NATO green, as it is the lightest color. So here we have the completed NATO green. I, uh, a note I would like to make is I did use a pencil to mark out uh, some of the lines early on. Um, and I quickly stopped because I realized from previous experiences that this is gonna be a horrible thing because once you add a lacquer uh, clear coat to a model, uh, something like graphite is gonna immediately show through. So if you're dumb like me, um, try not to use a pencil because then it will bite you back when you're uh, finishing the model. Uh, but here we're gonna be using some Tamiya Deep Green for the second green color. And as you can see, the colors are very similar, so uh, during painting it actually was sometimes kind of hard, uh, especially when I was leaning over and getting shadows on the aircraft to distinguish where the uh, lines were, but I ended up working out well. So now I'm going to be using some Black Green 27 uh, for the dark color. It ends up looking more of a grayish green, which is perfect, as that was almost the exact color used. Uh, in this camo scheme, so it was definitely good. I used this color to fill in all the places in the camo that it needed to, but also kind of uh, areas that I missed with the lighter green. I kind of just shot a little thin coat over it just to uh, blend the two lighter colors together if there was, say, uh, some bare plastic showing through. Right, and here's the completed camouflage. I always love painting the aircraft. It's something that I find very fun. Uh, it took about three hours and I took an entire night just to uh, uh, get the camouflage done. Uh, but it looks pretty good, I think, and the marbling and panel lines definitely shows through and definitely gives the aircraft a real and weathered appearance. Right, so now we're gonna work on the refueling port. And as you can see in the instructions, it is silver. I took a lot of time to research uh, the different variations of where on the aircraft it would be silver, but I ended up uh, deciding on where I'd be masking here. And after I finished masking, I used some spray paint by Tamiya, some AS12, the bare silver, and it ended up looking pretty good. And it took well to a wash later in the build, so it made me pretty happy. So next I'll be doing the tail flash, and all I can say is, even though it did end up looking really good, this yellow completely just gunked up my airbrush. I don't know what I did if I didn't did it correctly, but uh, it took a very long time for me to clean it out. Uh, but it ended up looking pretty good. Alright, so now it's time to paint the fans of the big General Electric TF-34 turbofan engine. 
Uh, and one of the reasons why I actually chose this kit was the way that this piece is actually set up. Uh, so first I'm going to paint it with some flat black. And then I'm going to go ahead and dry brush on some silver. It ended up looking really good and I was very satisfied with the output. And lastly, as we've completed the painting, I'm just going to seal it all in with this nice gloss coat. Alright, so this was a very quick video, but in part 3 we're going to be decaling. We're also going to be doing some washes. And finally we'll be building up some munitions and the base. Uh, but with that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next video.